for more analysis on this growing problem. We're joined now by uh, Hei Kyung, Kung, Kyung Kang. She is the chair of the Social Work Department at Seattle University. Professor Kang, thanks so much for joining us. First, let's talk about the uptick in slurs and violence against Asian Americans just over the last year. What are the numbers, and do you believe there's a direct correlation between that and the coronavirus? Yes, um, according to the AAPI.org site, um, the Stop AAPI um, website, there has been about 3,800 instance of uh, hate incidents against Asian Americans since uh, last year about this time. And although um, Asian Americans have been persecuted, discriminated against, and the anti-Asian violence has been around, there has been definitely an uptick. And um, there is no doubt in my mind the rhetorics around, um, especially from the last administrations about coronavirus has been like bring gasoline to the fire. There's a historic mistreatment of ethnic Asians in America. Uh, people often remember the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II, but less talked about is the exclusion of Chinese immigrants in the late 1800s. Uh, the repealing of citizenship of South Asians in the early 20th century following the case of uh, Bhagat Singh Thind. Uh, but those were examples of institutionalized racism, institutionalized discrimination. Are, are we there now again, or is this different? You know, I think that's one thing that people don't always talk about, is there has been long and steady discrimination against Asian Americans uh, uh, based on our race. You know, you talked about uh, Chinese Exclusion Act. Uh, there is an Asiatic uh, Bar Zone Act in the uh, 1920s. Um, there has been Page Act that targeted um, Chinese laborers and especially Chinese women. The law actually talks about uh, barring women brought in for immoral purposes from, quote, China, Japan, and any Oriental countries. So there has been very uh, specific ways in which Asian Americans have been discriminated um, against you know, by policies and by institutions. Um, I think what we are looking at here is that in many ways, all those uh, sentiments about Asian Americans as foreigners, uh, not trustworthy, does not exist, and the other side is the modern minority, is um, all those sentiments are sort of crashing down in this uh, environment, especially in the last four years of xenophobic environment. So I do think these are all related. I think one main thing that I would say is that um, for Asian Americans, these violences and instance and this discrimination, those are not new. We have known that, have been prevalent, we have been speaking out, but now I believe that people are more willing to listen because these uh, terrible tragedies have been happening and have been um, kept score uh, in the last year. I want to talk about the Georgia shooting. The director of the FBI said it's apparent that race, it seems apparent that race was not a part of this. But I wonder if by including the Georgia shootings in a larger conversation about anti-Asian American sentiment in the context of COVID, uh, many Americans and indeed the American media and society are really missing an opportunity to have an important, if not difficult, conversation. You know, these so-called Asian massage parlors, we, we all know or can guess what is happening there. This is an industry in the shadows. It's ripe for exploitation of women, many of them ethnically Asian, their, their life circumstances are very different than the so-called model minority experience that you talk about. No one seems to be talking about that. No one seems to want to have that conversation. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's been really frustrating to me to, to watch the mainstream media not be able to grapple with the intersection between race, colonialism, and misogyny. You know, first of all, the fact that the mainstream media has been keep saying this is a massage parlor crime. No, this is very directed against Asian women and how Asian women are portrayed as a hypersexualized sex workers. Um, there is an assumption that Asian businesses like massage uh, spas are uh, uh, places of prostitution or sex work, which I think is uh, extremely uh, wrong. And let's say there are 
let's say these women were sex workers, which I don't think they were. So that doesn't mean they have no rights. There's, there's no reason why they shouldn't, their lives shouldn't be held in the same dignity. So I think there is that the dismissal of um, women uh, due to misogyny and especially the, against racial women due to race and colonialism. Now, I think the conversation we have to have is not just about the one type of ways in which that racism manifests. Because I think a lot of people think, oh, you know, Asian, there's a racism against Asian Americans here, racism against black people here, racism against you know, native people here. But really, it is all based on white supremacy. This is the fire that is burning different corners of forest. But this fire is the same fire that is going to end up burning down the whole forest of our humanity. It's called, and also United States. Now, I think what we need to really think about is that, and you have mentioned um, about uh, sex trafficking and so on, or the shadow economy. What we need to think about is how that uh, crisis, the race, economy, immigration policies, and misogyny all come together in this conversation. We cannot just have conversation about just the economy or just immigration or just misogyny or just race. These are interrelated topics and this is a very complex topic and I am afraid that um, mainstream conversation is stepping away from this complexity.